What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Variant the Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Eris Quinones, with Tim Conley. Happy holidays, Variant Nation. Yes, happy holidays. And boy, do we have a podcast for you today. Uh, oh my God. As the world and definitely nerd community is well aware, Disney had their Disney Investors Day uh, pretty recently here and dropped a crap ton of annou- announcements, man. Just all the announcements Star Wars, it was like, Marvel, it was like Pixar. nerdy whiplash. We say it all the time, but like it is not fair that they own all these franchises and properties. Like the amount of IP that Disney has is insane. Like, given like, you know, the Disney stuff that's, you know, was created internally and stuff like that. But the fact that they bought Star Wars, they bought Marvel, they bought Fox, I mean, they get like the Alien franchises and all this stuff, like The Simpsons. It's like, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Like, how is that fair to anyone else? Yep. It's not fair. Well, I can tell you this this Investor Day uh, presentation, they put their IPs on full display it was it it was as if they were trying to make a point to rub it in right like (laughs) yeah it it was as if they were putting the rest of the industry on notice like hey in case you forgot why we are the top (laughs) dog in the ip space here you go it was crazy from start to finish i'm not kidding when i say it was nerdy whiplash it was non-stop for almost four hours it was insane it was one announcement after the other, one incredible IP, one new announcement after the other. I mean, it was overwhelming. Yeah, it was a, it was like an assault on my person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Like, I, I no was kidding. winded in the, like the best way possible, but tired, so tired. I'm like, this was amazing, but man, I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, man, we were, you know, we were trying to cover it for. I would, you know, I was hitting like Twitter and stuff like that. We were talking about it back and forth, you and I. Yeah. And we, you couldn't even get it all in. No. It was like, dude, it was so fast. So rapid fire too. And in the end, it was literally a hundred pieces of content that were discussed and brought up and either revealed or elaborated on stuff we already knew about, but they just elaborated on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a hunt literally by the end, a hundred pieces of content. That is insane. 80% of which, as we learned, is it's gonna be exclusive to Disney Plus, which well, is not crazy. just Disney Plus, 80% of all the content is gonna be spread out all o- across their direct you know, to consumer marketplaces. Well, because they own, they own Hulu and ESPN as well, yeah, right? Yeah, they own Hulu, FX, they own the ESPN+, Plus, Nat Geo, they own all of these other platforms that they're developing, expanding, including the announcement of their star platform that they're going to be expanding, not just here in the States, but acro- around the world primarily. It's globally, actually, yeah. Around the world internationally. So they're going to be doing, I mean, the stuff, they, they announced a crap ton of stuff around their sporting platforms that are just, it's just crazy. It was insane the amount of stuff that they that they just smacked down on the table. It was just like it was it was relentless. Point is, they definitely made it a a point <laughs> to say that <laughs> <laughs> to say that the majority of their content uh, is going to you know their streaming services, which is Hulu and Disney Plus and all that stuff. I mean, a lot of right. people already have the package where they have a package where you could get Disney Plus along with Hulu and ESPN. So right. you know, if you have that, you're you're pretty much set because long term anyway. Like whether you know, let's say the remaining the remaining twenty percent of stuff that's going to go to theaters or TV first, like cable, uh, that's eventually going to end up on Hulu, ESPN, or Disney Plus anyway. So in long yeah. In the yeah. long term, everything's going to that. So it, it's just, it's pretty nuts. It's yeah, pretty it, nuts. It, it, there was a lot of very telling aspects of the overall investor day, you know, especially some of the things they didn't say, you know, and I've already said this to you, like one of the biggest standouts for me of things they didn't say was there was no presentation for Disney parks whatsoever. None. None. At all. And historically speaking, for you know, almost all of Disney's history, their parks segment has been is one of their biggest money makers. It's one of the biggest segments of their business model. And, you know, we all know in the last few months Disney has completely restructured and uh, you know, put their entire business model on new footing and in a new direction because of the current state of the world and the general direction that it seems like uh the powers that be are moving us. But, you know, the that was a very telling aspect. But as the, you know, that coincides with the other aspect we're already talking about, which is just how heavy handed the direct to consumer market um, or aspects of their presentation was. It was it was just the vast bulk of what they talked about. In fact, uh, in terms of their productions that they talked about, those hundred pieces of content um, in there. Um, only Marvel and Pixar definitively said this movie is coming to theaters at, at some point in 2021 or 2022 or what have you. Um, although I will say Disney did lead off 
um, the whole presentation presentation by reaffirming their commitment to um, putting you know some of their theaters in uh, or their films back in theaters um, and having them debut in theaters and things like that. So they did say that, and I will also add that they made it very clear that they were not going to follow Warner Brothers' model. Even the the movie uh, Raya that's coming out in March. Uh, that's going to go in theaters, but it's, and the only way you're going to be able to watch from home is the same way they did with Mulan, which is in the premiere package and you pay, it's like almost 30 bucks to view it at home. So they're not following Warner brothers. That's clear. Now they're not following Warner brothers model. They're going to do their own thing, but there was a lot of things that they said that made it very clear the direction of things for Disney and all of their IPs and brands and platforms. And a lot of the things they, they did say, um, just kind of confirmed that as well. Yeah, I'm so skeptical though. Like, I mean, it was the way this year things are going. Like, even when people say stuff, it's like, okay, three months later, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So that's that's what they say for now. For now. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're <laughs> constantly. It seems like right now we are in such a hyperdrive state uh -huh. of perpetual change um, that yeah, there's no way to know what might change going. You know, even 30 days from now. Uh, but for right now, that's what they're saying. I think this year proved that anything, you know, anything like as far as movie release dates or TV shows or anything like that, that like Hollywood in general is saying right now should be taken with a grain of salt. Right. Because again, it's like what's good for them now, come March, they may see something completely differently and be like, oh, okay, well, maybe not. Maybe we got to shift gears again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess the easiest way to look at it is to say, you know, this is what they're saying, but where are they putting the money? Mm -hmm. And that presentation yesterday made it very clear they are putting the bulk of their money on direct to consumer. So that says a lot there. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 we said it before. This is ultimately where, you know, the world was going. I mean, music seemed to have the biggest one where that's completely digital now. You know what I'm saying? Comics is definitely going digital. Uh, now movies seems like it's, it's just, it's just 2020 is like, oh yeah, you thought this was going to happen in five to 10 years. No, 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 no. We speeding that up yeah. a bit. <laughs> you, you yeah. Know? I mean, it, it definitely seems, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> 2020 definitely expedited a lot of things for sure. Um, but I think a lot of the direction that things are going and especially the heavy handed nature of it all, uh, the amount of change, even some of the things that people aren't even, I don't think, fully realize in terms of the changes that a lot of this stuff is going to force. I think it's more than a lot of people as we're seeing it unfold, especially as fast. I think it's even more so than many of us may have thought for the future might even look like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So but, you know, we'll see. It's still it's still kind of unpacking. Uh, so we'll all be paying very close attention as it does so over the next uh, six to 12 months. Yes. But with all that said, let's get into meat. Now, obviously, this there was it was all of Disney. So everything they owned it was ESPN, Nat Geo, yeah, yeah, Pixar, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Disney Animation. But we're mainly going to stick to Star Wars and Marvel because that's yeah. what we love most here. L Lucasfilm and, and, <laughs> yeah. and Mar MC and the Marvel Studios. But and I will say, even with that, there is no way we can cover everything no. that was no, no, released no, no, no. yesterday in detail. So do not expect that in this Dude. podcast. We're going to hit the highlights and we're, we'll mention, you know, everything. But we, we there's no way we can go. It was just too much content. Well, I don't even want to say we'll mention everything because I'm sure we're going to forget something. There's well, too much. Well, I mean, we can, we can kind of just <laughs> list it by name, but we're going to hit the pertinent stuff, the stuff that's really impactful or that stood out to us or whatever. But yes. yeah, there's no way. And I will say this too, before we dive into the big stuff, one of the, a couple of the things um, that aren't MCU or Star Wars related that were huge. And I just, just quickly mentioned them that I was like, really excited about that they mentioned one is the new alien series that they're producing and developing mm -hmm. for fx that's really cool um, why the last man finally that's been in development for i don't even know how long yeah and that's in development for the hulu and fx platform as well um but also they're doing uh, under the disney or pixar rather label they are doing a buzz lightyear origin film that i thought was a really cool announcement with chris evans Captain America himself voicing the original Buzz Lightyear. So that's a pretty fun family ad as well. Yeah, it's called Lightyear. And every, yep. I, at first, everyone was like, why aren't you getting Tim Allen back? It's because this is not about the toy, like Andy's toy Buzz Lightyear. Exactly. This is about the fictional character within that universe. Like the, you know, like... The actual, the Buzz, actual Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Like the, yeah, they're basically yeah, that, giving that you like created the toy. Exactly. Yeah. So we're gonna see like essentially watch the cartoon of the cartoon. <laughs> it's, like, yes. it's like a cartoon yeah, of the cartoon. Really. <laughs> and in that yeah, uh, no in that joke. movie, Chris, Ca good old Captain America, he went to Twitter or Instagram rather, saying you know how like basically they came to him, they were like Buzz Lightyear. He's like, I'm in. 
I don't even care. Like, that's all he heard. <laughs> and he was like, I, I'll do it. I mean, can you blame him? Yeah, it's just funny. Like, at that point, he didn't even know, like, he was going to be voicing Buzz. It was just like, no, yeah, I'll do anything. Right. I'll do it. Right. Yeah. And then, and surprisingly, that's actually going to hit summer of 2022. So it's not even that far off. No, that means they're definitely working on it because those animated movies take a very long time to to get done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's already well underway, clearly. I'm surprised they kept that under wraps for as long as they did because that's a huge character for Disney. Dude, that it's it's such a clever way to do a spinoff, too, to continue the Buzz Lightyear, or it's rather to oh, continue yeah. the Toy Story like theme movies, yeah, yeah, but yeah. do something that's like with. You know, in that universe, but not in that universe, because now you're not talking about the actual toys. It's kind of remind. Right. You know what it reminds me of? Actually, it's exactly this. Do you remember the '90s uh, Buzz Lightyear animated series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's basically like that. It seems that as the way they describe it, it's gonna be like that, but like a movie. <laughs> in a sense, you know what I mean? Where <laughs> I it mean, follows in this- a way, yeah, yeah. So in a way, but they are. It, I mean, like you said, it's gonna be. It's gonna elaborate on his origin story, the origin of the real Buzz Lightyear who uh, inspired the toy, the toy. Was created after. So yeah, so it'll be, it's going to, it looks out, looks and sounds like it's going to be more of a sci-fi action hero. And, and the uh, still they showed the freaking animate Pixar's animation. Looks very cool. Is, is insane. It's insane. Yeah. They, they have moved to a, a different level in the last like five years or so. Yeah. And their animation is just becoming unreal. Mm-hmm. Unreal. Well, in fact, speaking of, oh, well this isn't, that's not Pixar. I was going to say the, the it, for all of you who uh, love Baymax, uh, big hero six, um, there did they announced a, a Baymax series for Disney plus as well, but that's actually Disney animation. That's not Pixar. So I don't want, sorry to get that confused. Big hero. Uh, but six. that's happening too. Yeah. That's really yeah, cool. Big hero six. So there, I mean, like again, so much stuff was announced yesterday. We're, we're not even going to scratch the search at surface on like 60% of it. Like the live action <laughs> Pinocchio starring Tom Hanks as freaking Geppetto and directed by Robert Zemeckis. Lord help me. That's going to, that could be so cool. And the fact that that's coming to Disney plus and that's going to be a Disney plus original really surprised me. Honestly. So good. I thought for sure that was going to fall into the, you know, the theaters and you got to rent it on, you know, the premium or whatever, because that is, I mean, Tom Hanks is in it. The Hanks, playing Tim. Playing Geppetto. The Hanks. Yeah. Uh, crazy. <laughs> And th- I'm excited. Peter about that Pan one. and I mean, Wendy, Jude pretty- Law playing Captain Hook. Yeah, man. Bro. I mean, come on. As soon as I saw the Big Ben and I saw and I heard the the classic Peter Pan right. music, you know, I, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if we've ever actually discussed, but Peter Pan is one of my top two Disney films, mm-hmm. classic Disney films of all time. Uh, so that movie that when I saw that, I was like, you better not mess with me. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but yeah, they announced some really, really epically cool stuff yesterday. And, and I mean, to go through, you're you're talking about all in all, and again, just to emphasize why we're not going to touch on everything. They announced, uh, in terms of numbers, uh, they announced I think it was ten Star Wars films, ten Marvel or uh, pieces of content, I should say, yeah. ten Star Wars pieces of content, ten Marvel pieces of content, fifteen uh, different Disney pieces of content. I mean, it was just a ton. But now. Let's finally get into meat. We already said that before, but now let's really get into meat. We keep sidetracking. Yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, let's go yeah. get so into that, some that's Star a little, Wars. That's a little taste of some of the other bigger things. Yeah, yeah. let's get into that, that Star Wars. And we got to kick it off with, I think, both of our favorite Star Wars announcements. The Obi-Wan mm-hmm. Kenobi series. Yeah. Dude. Okay. First, Without a doubt. First of all, we said it, we talk about the Mandalorian all the time. Like we we basically, you know, like the end of the year when the new Mandalorian seasons come out, that's like all the podcast is going to be for like the, those two months, <laughs> essentially, right? Yeah. But Deborah Cho is one of the best directors for the Mandalorian thus far. Like she had two of the best episodes from season one. She's a beast. From season one. Yeah. Now. She is awesome. And she is going to be, you know, doing this series. She is taking on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which we found out, Tim. Tim, this is I know I know you're gonna rant after me because this is close yeah, to your heart. Just, but just let it out because I'm I'm like ready to burst already. This series takes place ten years after Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, man. Meaning this series is taking place when Anakin has been Vader for ten a decade, for a decade already, which is all gonna culminate to him eventually fighting, having an epic battle with Obi Wan. Juan Kenobi. And the last time they yes, fought, sir. last time they fought, we know Obi-Wan had the high ground and that didn't end so well for Anakin. But Did this not. time Anakin's going to be super pissed because <laughs> he's like, yo, you <laughs> caught both my legs and my arm last time. This time that's not going to happen, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. So, wow. But this also means, this also means, oh man, it's just, I, I don't even, so much because we know so obviously in, in A New Hope, you know, Vader kills 
Obi Wan in the, in that in that epic scene, that very iconic mm-hmm. scene. So yep. what's gonna happen in this scene? Because we know neither of them die because we know how it ultimately ends. So what's right. gonna happen? And and Hayden Christensen, Anakin from the prequels is back as Darth Vader. <laughs> There you go. There it is. You finally said it. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> uh, that was the biggest news of the day for me. There's a ton of Marvel stuff that we're going to get to that was also huge. There's other Star Wars stuff. But for me personally, fi- hearing them say that Christ- Hayden Christensen is coming back to reprise the role, but this time as Darth Vader and him, Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi, are gonna go? Are they going to rematch? They're gonna go head to head once again, because here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? I have said on this show several times the thing that has been missing and that they have to do. They teased it. They teased me in Rogue One. They teased me when they brought back back Darth Vader, right? And we got just a small taste of Darth Vader at his peak Sith powers, right? <laughs> Do you remember that scene at the end there where he, he breaks into oh, the dude, ship? Oh, dude, that's like one of that right. That little scene is like one of the best Vader scenes ever, like filmed. Exactly. But here's the thing: that is a slightly older Darth Vader too. He's still epically powerful, but it's a slightly older Darth Vader at that point because that's at right at the beginning of A New Hope, mm-hmm. right? So that's many years into that's a, that's probably another decade into the future from where this is taking place. So we are going to get Darth Vader. For the first time, and this is what I've been begging Lucasfilm for for many years, is give us a Vader series where we get, for the first time, everyone, all Star Wars fans, we get to see Darth Vader at peak Sith power, right? And show everybody, show us in detail why he is the most feared beast, feared Sith in the entire galaxy. And this freaking show they just told us is going to do just that and i am so excited i can't even begin to tell you how (laughs) excited i am for this because not only are they giving us that but they're giving us that inside of an obi-wan kenobi centric series and they're gonna have the two battle it out again well all that means is you know this series this is like the rematch between Tyson Holyfield, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Tyson Holyfield. It's so freaking good. All that means is this series is going to explore, since it's an Obi-Wan uh, series, it's going to deal with, you know, him dealing and with the fallout of his best friend and once, right. you know, a pupil. That's that. Mm-hmm. That's pretty freaking crazy. That his he's gonna we're gonna see him finally deal with the loss of his Padawan. Like that is gonna be really really cool. And then come head to head with him again. Like he already beat him because he was dealing with that a little bit at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. But now like it's set in. You know, Vader he, Anakin has been Vader for ten years now, so he's already done that's a right. crap ton of damage. So all and and is it one of those things too where like. Are they going to save? Because this is a, a limited series, so they're going to save it—the big boss fights for like the last episode. Or are we going to oh, see man, mini confrontations know. throughout this series? I'm just well, I'm so curious. Are we, we do know that this is a mini series? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a limited series, right? So right, right. it's a limited series. I, I, I'm very curious, and you know, even besides seeing Vader fight Obi Wan, I have to imagine we're going to see both Vader and Obi Wan tear different people apart. You know what I mean? Like forget, yeah. like obviously the big, the big, you know. Uh, fight everyone's gonna look for is for them fighting each other again but i just want to mm-hmm. see freaking vader like you know storming <laughs> like oh freaking God, force dude. choke and throw people and all that stuff like okay, come on bro let me tell you something rogue one gave us for the first time it gave us a glimpse at what the potential was of how incredibly dope darth vader could be under different directors with a, a, like a, a more realistic edgy you know tone I mean, the possibilities are endless there. And to know, because this is, they're going to do, basically, I have to believe, they're going to do the same thing in this that they're doing in Mandalorian with Boba Fett, where this isn't just going to be an Obi-Wan Kenobi series where we're seeing Obi-Wan deal with the fallout of, you know, what happened with the fall of the Republic and losing his Padawan to the dark side. We're going to be seeing a further exploration of Darth Vader as a character, right? Anakin Skywalker's journey and saga. That's going to be a part of this series. Does that mean they're going to explore things that they have developed in the comics over the last several years? You know, or are they going to be adding to that? We don't know. But the fact that they're going to be doing that 
is just so incredible. And because Obi-Wan Kenobi was responsible in uh, for overseeing and protecting Luke Skywalker, we know that he's in, he lives on Tatooine and he over, he kind of keeps an eye on Luke Skywalker. Does this mean we're going to be seeing a young 10-year-old Luke Skywalker that he's kind of protecting and hiding and all this kind of is that going to play a role in this? The, the, I have the, to just imagine. the potential for this. Yeah, I do too. I have to imagine that's going to be part of it. But the, I mean what role is that going to play? Is this going to be part of, you know, Vader hunting and seeking out his kids? Like, what is this going to look like? But altogether, knowing that they're going to be adding another confrontation between, basically a third confrontation between Obi-Wan and, and Anakin, knowing that that is actually going to be when they, when they add it, that's going to be the last time that the two saw each other that is referenced in A New Hope right before Obi-Wan dies. And he says, it's been a long time, you know, that whole deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, for Star Wars fans, that is exciting. And knowing that Deborah Cho is doing it, uh, especially after the incredible job that she did uh, in The Mandalorian, I am just stoked out of my mind. I can't wait to see it. Very, very excited. But that, again, that is only the first of many, many, many. Yeah, that was the biggest. That was the biggest. That was the biggest. Although, I mean, yeah, that was definitely the biggest. But you know I'm a big Ahsoka fan. You know I love me some Ahsoka. Oh, yeah. Like she is uh-huh. easily become one of the best Star Wars characters ever since her debut in 2008 in uh, the Clone Wars uh, animated film. And mm-hmm. as as we all were speculating, she is in fact getting her own series yep. by none other than John Favreau and Dave Filoni. And we know from her, you know, her episode in The Mandalorian season two that it's basically going to follow her search for Ezra and Thrawn. So that right. we, we they didn't say that, but we could assume from her episode that's the, that's yeah. going to be the premise the of her series. And I am just so excited. R- Rosario Dawson did a freaking fantastic job. Again, she had we've said this all before, but she had one of the coolest lightsaber battles live action that we've ever seen. Uh, she played the character flawlessly. She was likable. She uh, she was extremely like badass. Just. Oh, cool. Just very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> very excited. Yeah, and, and you know, even to elaborate on that further, um, and this was both exciting and part of one of the things I kind of was slightly disappointed about um, because we've talked about many times on the show about The Mandalorian and our absolute love of this show mm-hmm. and what Dave Filoni and John Favreau are doing with it. Um, I should say John Favreau and Dave Filoni because jo- this is John Favreau's baby and Dave Filoni is, you know, just part of the, the story team and he, he works with John Favreau. Um, but, uh, you know, we, that is, we are huge fans of that and we have been saying and calling for like John Favreau and Dave Filoni to take the creative helm of the direction of star Wars in general, especially the star Wars, uh, universe on Disney plus. And one of the things we did learn in this investor day was that that's not going to happen. They're overseeing two spinoffs of the Mandalorian. So these three shows are going to be operating within the same timeline and the same universe, or I guess you could say the same, uh, you know, story arcs um, and exploring the same characters with not just Ahsoka, but also another show that was announced called Rangers of the new Republic. Mm -hmm. We didn't get a ton of information about that, uh, but it's, it's, you know, it's these two guys are developing the show that is, it's going to be a part of, you know, what, very similar to what they're doing with the Mandalorian. And, you know, we've seen some of the Rangers that have been introduced. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the I have to imagine that it's going to be epic, right? I mean, you say John Favreau, Dave Filoni, I'm in. Like, it's just like, you don't even have to give me a plot. Yeah, like, yeah, it's going to be a good. Doubt. <laughs> without a doubt. But the thing is, is that they announced several, as we'll talk about here in a second, they announced several other pieces um, of additional Star Wars content that's being created and they're not be, they're not involved. And that was a little bit of a disappointment because, again, you can have different directors, but I really was hoping to see a further rollout of Jon Favreau, Dave Filoni acting in that Kevin Feige role over the entirety of the Star Wars universe, I guess you could say. Just the stories and keeping things in order and continuity and and similar tones where it's hearkening back to, you know, the the, the OG Star Wars and, and keeping true to the core of what Star Wars is while still exploring new new characters, new storylines, et cetera. And it seems like they're still going to be kind of splintered in several different directions. So I, I'm not super thrilled about that. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But one of the other pieces of content that they announced that isn't associated with Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau is Andor, the, the story of Cassian that we all knew was coming with Diego Luna. That's a spin, you know, it's a spinoff of Rogue One uh, and the, that character. 
they revealed that. We got our first look at it that's coming to Disney Plus in 2022. Um, and that looks phenomenal. Just looks fantastic. Looks just like Rogue One. So it's like, you know, it'll probably be fine. But again, I just, I think as a, as a, as an OG Star Wars fan myself, I know you're the same. I, it's just, I really would love to see a continuity of tone carried through all of these Star Wars pieces while still letting directors and other writers, you know, uh, you know tell their story and add their own spin and their own vibe to it. But just with a, a core through line, you know what I mean? That that is kept in continuity. Yeah. Uh, by by you know one you know one group of or two guys that are steering the overall ship. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, again, this isn't the first time that you or I have said that uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau should be the Feige overseeing all Star Wars uh, content. Not even just Disney Plus, yeah, yeah, just yeah. like everything, just yeah, straight to yeah. theaters, Disney yeah. Plus, all of it. So it is like you said. I agree with you. It's a little sad that they are not, but it at the same time you know, glass half full, we're going to now have three piece, three live action Star Wars series because Mandalorian's not going anywhere. So we're going to have, yeah. we're still going to have three live action shows, uh, Rangers of the New Republic, uh, Ahsoka and the Mandalorian that it's going to cross over with one another right. and Favreau and Filoni are going to have full control over. So it's like, while I agree with you and want them to have everything, I it's like you kind of got to have to be happy for what you get, <laughs> I guess. Although with that, like, I feel like we're so... No, I don't. <laughs> I do not. I don't have to accept squats. No, I ain't going to watch it. <laughs> Although, no, I am curious to see, like, you know, even though Favreau and Filoni won't be heading it, at least not on paper, because for all we know, they could be like advisors, like ghost advisors on the background, you know, just not yeah. getting a credit for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'd be very, I'm very curious to see, like, are they going to do completely different tones with like, you know, uh, shows like Acolyte and Andor and stuff like that, where, because mm -hmm. it seems like, you know, because the MCU does that, right? Where every movie is different. Like you have like Ant-Man, it's like a heist movie. Then you have Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like a sci-fi, like action comedy and stuff like that. But it all still mm -hmm. kind of fits. So I'm wondering if they're still going to try to do that, even not having their Feige, you know, so to speak. But uh, we'll see. yeah, with that, the biggest thing that I was disappointed on uh, that Filoni's not attached to that I was like, this right. this one for me was more so than all the live action stuff. Because I'm like, this is this literally his wheelhouse. This was the most surprising one. Yeah, because we're getting another Star Wars animated series called The Bad Batch. Right. And these characters, these group of troopers, clone troopers, actually came from season seven of The Clone Wars. From literally the baby and brainchild of Dave Filoni and George Lucas. So it's like, yeah. what... Why is he not attached to this? I mean, this is really, really weird. Literally, he, like, co-created and, you know, again, he ran Clone Wars. That's that's literally his claim to fame, the Clone Wars. So it's like, <laughs> why would you not have him, you know, involved in some aspect uh, in the show? Again, he might be doing stuff behind the scenes or maybe producer, executive producer. I don't know. That definitely wasn't announced. I even looked on IMDb and his name was nowhere. So as of now. It is being executive producer. He is executive producer? Okay. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, uh, so he's not completely detached. Okay. So that's good. I just, it, it, he just won't be directing it the way that he yeah, did with the clone. That's so, that's still, that's, that's awesome. See, that, that does give me some light. But at the same time, it's like <laughs> Filoni, like, again, it, this is literally what he did. This is what this it could be yeah. argued or flat out said that the Clone Wars animated series is literally what revived the Star Wars franchise as a whole. But way before you could definitely make that argument, way before, yeah. you know, Disney uh, got it with the Mandalorian and the new trilogy and stuff like that. So it's like, why not? What are you doing? <laughs> but it, it, just to say that it looks really cool. I'm very excited. It's taking place after season seven of the Clone Wars uh, with the rise of the Empire and all that stuff. So I'm very, very excited for it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not because again, this one wasn't a surprise announcement. We knew about the mm -hmm. Bad Batch. We knew that this was coming. Yep. Yeah, it, I guess it is a little bit surprising that he isn't involved. I mean, I, I guess we don't know. We we might see him direct a couple of episodes, but at the same time, he's developing. You know, he's still working on the Mandalorian, and he's developing mm -hmm. two new series that are spinoffs of the Mandalorian that they are looking to have come out in a relatively short period of time. By the way, so um, you know, this is coinciding also with their announcement that. Uh, they're building uh, three additional studios uh, uh, that are the you know the volume the the that they what what they call the volume which is the technological the new technology that they're using to film these series 
uh, for the 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 special effects and the visual effects, right? Um, but shot in a practical way. Right. Um, they're building three more of them. Yeah. Uh, in various places around the world, and one of them apparently is going to be massive. They're calling it the Studio of the Future. They're saying you know it's going to be just huge. It's a great big world. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure they're going to be part of that whole situation. So they've got their hands full. So I, it's not entirely surprising that he would just be maybe overseeing it as executive producer and making sure again that it stays on track with uh you know the world that he kind of created there with the clone wars and and who these bad batch characters are uh because again they were created and directed by him in the, the final season of the clone dude, wars so cool I, they're like for me that was the coolest part of the dude the yeah they're like experimental yeah. troopers that are like have yeah, these, like so special cool. like tasks and abilities and together they're yeah. like the ultimate like squad it's very very cool yeah but it, i mean it speaks to what you're saying speaks to exactly kind of the heart of my point is that you know, there is a already uh, just from what he did with the Clone Wars, then the Rebels and now the Mandalorian alongside Jon Favreau, who was also involved in the Clone Wars and so forth, by the way. Um, but what these guys have done to revitalize Star Wars and have been the bright light, uh, you know, after a trilogy that many of us were not, you know, fully thrilled with and, and wished it had, you know, gone a different direction in certain ways. You know, there's a loyalty and allegiance to these guys and an understanding of that. These guys really understand Star Wars. that And that's the reason and the core of why you're like, I wish they, you know, everything else they announced also said uh, executive produced by. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That they had their, it, or it was at least clear that these guys are going to be directly involved in the direction or the tone or making sure that we're not veering off into, you know, again, like the last trilogy, it was so different than anything we're seeing from the Mandalorian, right? Mm -hmm. Like it just, the whole feel of it, the whole vibe, the whole approach to Star Wars was so night and day different. And I don't think there's a single OG Star Wars fan. Okay, this might, I don't want to yeah, say that. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta Never be careful go there. absolute. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the majority of OG Star Wars fans would say they prefer the approach that we're seeing from the Mandalorian over what they did with the last trilogy. It's not everybody. There's a lot of people who loved it, but I'm talking about the core old school, grew up with Star Wars, big time Star Wars fans. Um, you know, are really liking what they're seeing with Mandalorian. And it's reflecting in the numbers. The Mandalorian is single-handedly responsible. And again, just when they showed the numbers yesterday and they revealed them, the Mandalorian is single-handedly responsible uh, for, or, or one of the, the, or the biggest piece responsible for the explosion in growth with under Disney+. Plus. It, 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 it was so, the numbers for the Mandalorian and Disney+, Plus were so big that it dwarfed most Netflix, Amazon Prime shows, et cetera, and original content. And, and that was like laid bare yesterday. It's just... So it's like, again, it's, it's all, it's being, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. So it's like, why mess with the recipe if the recipe, if people are digging what you're cooking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, I, so I, 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 I'm hoping that's the case, that there's there more involvement from them than, than they're revealing, and we just won't know it, but you'll see a lot of similarities. Because some of these ideas, dude, like the Acolyte, we talked about it a little bit before we started here, um, the, this, the whole concept of the Acolyte, is just sounds dope. Yeah. That, and it goes along with a lot of things we've been saying. It's probably the future of Star Wars. It's the direction they're headed with the High Republic. It's based in the High Republic era. And it's this mystery, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be really the first of its kind, like a mystery thriller uh, Star Wars series. You know, it's, I guess it's, you know, going to be kind of the characters. We're not really sure who they're going to be, but it's female centric, supposedly. Um, as far as the characters, but it's set in the High Republic era, and it's probably going to be our first big step into that portion, that new uh, era of the Star Wars un uh, universe that we're going to be exploring here in books and novels, comic books, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's going to be cool, but again, I just hope that they're able to maintain uh, that same epic original Star Wars vibe that, that we've been getting from the Mandalorian. If one thing's for sure, uh, they're definitely uh, not shrinking the budget for any of these uh, new shows. Yo, like, yeah. it is crazy. We saw behind the scenes uh, for Andor, and, you know, the the set designers and uh, costume designers and the actors and everything saying, like, 
this is just the movie. This is a movie, like a movie set. Like there's, they did not take anything away. It's a full on production. No, it's not like you know, because yeah. norm. I think that's like those days are you know slowly becoming a thing in the past. Where obviously you're gonna have like the yeah. CWs and like sitcoms of the world. Mm -hmm. But as far as like premium sure. TV, like dude, it is on par with blockbuster movies and or better. It sometimes it, it almost seems in a lot of ways because as technology is rolling out and you know a lot of things are becoming straight to streaming and consumer this year. It seems yeah. like almost TV is getting the new toys now before movies <laughs> are getting uh, all the all For the real. new toys to work with. So it just it is insane. I'm super excited that like we're gonna keep getting these super you know theatrical quality shows you know episodic and it's almost making me like I, I don't want to say I like episodic more than theatrical movies but it's like it's just because when you think of stuff like the Mandalorian right it's like eight episodes every season is going to be eight episodes right, so right. they average around 30 to let's they average around 40 minutes an episode so you could say every two mm -hmm. episodes is mm -hmm. a movie so you're kind of getting yeah like four movies a season right like right so you're right. actually getting more from these series than you would have just them making one movie so it's like in that way i'm like you know what maybe i kind of do like because it's the same exact quality and i'm getting more story and it's just fun from week yeah. to week to you know talk about it with you other friends with the audience and it's like it kind of makes it an event where it's exciting with the with the community to talk about you know what I mean? Without a doubt. So I, yeah, I mean, I'm it's very two, excited. It's two very different experiences, right? It is. It is. So you have like, you're, you're, you know, and that's kind of one of the things that I really, it's going to break my heart a little bit to see go away is that some cinematic experience, mm -hmm. right? Where you can go and experience that as kind of a community. People can come together and, and experience that. We've talked about that before. That's one thing. But yeah, there is a huge element to the, the long form television series format where a writer, a, and especially around these franchises that we love and these characters that we love, where they have such deep uh, roots and deep histories and mythologies and things that can be explored where there's just epic world building, mm -hmm. like the world, like the universe of Star Wars, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC Universe, et cetera, where there's so many things you can do and there's so much world building that can be done that you can flesh out characters and storylines in a way on a long form series uh, and especially multi-season series that you just simply can't do with a movie, even if you have like multiple films, you know what I mean? You, you, you just run out of uh, runway at some point, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Like there is definitely a lot to be said for the direction that this, these series are going because of the amount of money and detail that they're putting into it. These, some of these series, not just Star Wars, but some of the, the, the stuff we saw and are seeing from the Marvel series oh, yeah. uh, that we're going to talk about here in just this a little like bit. Same I mean, quality. It, it straight up looks, yeah, it's, it's the same quality as what we see on the big mm -hmm. screen, which is unique to our modern times. For right? sure. I mean, you could go back to Game of Thrones, right? Some of the things we saw in Game of Thrones was like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. They're just like, this is, this is cinema quality content. Right, that you're seeing on a on a, as a television show, and so you know shows like that have really changed the game because they were so popular and they made so much money for their studios and for their you know their platforms that now they're all like oh if you know it's kind of the whole if if we build it they will come sort <laughs> of a deal, <laughs> right? And that's basically what we're seeing is these studios are seeing like oh if we really put effort in this into this and we really invest in this we're gonna reap the rewards because they're people are gonna show up oh for sure in the same way they do with the theaters. I think Disney Plus's numbers definitely showed that people are showing <laughs> yeah. up, dude. It's it's crazy yeah, that without they doubt. announced uh, yesterday. They said uh, as of yesterday, uh, Disney Plus just Disney Plus alone has eighty six point eight million subscribers yeah. and then you tack on hulu which is like another 38 uh million and then you have uh espn which is around another 12 million all in all they have well over a hundred million subscribers collectively right. which is ridiculous so <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's ridiculous it is ridiculous and it's honestly right now they they couldn't be happier for it because that's become their bread and butter oh yeah it's their new because golden egg right the golden goose going on they're like man if it wasn't for this yeah, for <laughs> sure it is their saving grace in this year that everything yeah. shut down pretty much yeah um but uh going through some other star wars stuff real quick because we definitely want to get to the marvel because you know me end of the day i'm yeah. the comic guy tim that the <laughs> oh, actually real quick just let me mention about the acolyte too uh, yeah, before we jump over there, because you're 100% right, we do. <laughs> There's a lot to get to there. Yes. Um, going back to the Acolyte real quick, the one thing I didn't say is uh, that that's going to make that 
unique is not only is it a, a mystery thriller, but it's going to be Sith centric. Yes. It's in the high Republic and all that stuff. But this is the first series that's really going to focus on a Sith perspective as the Sith try to come back. And there's a lot of uh, speculation about, is this going to somehow be tied to Darth Plagueis? So we don't have any confirmation um, on any of that, but that that the things surrounding that series has it's really sparked my attention. I, I'm fine with that and all, you know, and I have no you know gripes with the High Republic. But again, this is something we've talked about in the past. I want the old Republic, man. Give me Revan, all right. Give me yeah. give me Nihilus. Yeah. Give me all those like super like crazy like you know Sith lords from the past. Like that's what I'm all about. But you know. Who knows? Yeah, I, we'll see. Again, I, don't, I, I have no opinion on High Republic. We haven't really seen much of it yet. But uh, some other st- uh, other announcements real quick before we get into uh, Marvel. Lando, a Lando series, which that's a freaking huge yep. announcement. That's uh, a big, that big, a big one. Big yeah. one. Um, a droid story, which is going to feature R2-D2 and C-3PO. You know, just everyone's favorite droids from <laughs> Star just, Wars. Just, a just, just, just some, you know, little known droids. And uh, <laughs> lastly, Star Wars Visions, which is going to be a series of, uh, it's an anthology series, actually. And it's going to be anime. So they're getting a bunch of the best anime artists and directors and creators to do an anthology series for Star Wars. So I'm very excited for that because, you know, I love me some anime. So you mix that with Star Wars. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. The, the, I mean, all everything they announced, there wasn't a single thing where I was like, wah, wah. <laughs> everything they announced in terms of what's coming to Disney Plus under the, star, the Lucasfilm banner uh, was like, oh, that's going to be cool. Oh, that's going to be right. really cool. You know what I mean? And then, and then they went along and they announced that Patty Jenkins... Our girl, oh my God, I, Jenkins, I can't believe I almost forgot Wonder that. Woman, they made a video. Of- got landed her very yes. own Star Wars film with Rogue Squadron, man. I was so excited for her. I was like, man, I was like, I was like standing up and applauding. I was like, <laughs> my girl, Patty. Dude, for real. Get it, girl. Dude, did you know her dad was a fighter pilot? I didn't Dude. know that until yesterday. So, yeah, her, her dad was a fighter pilot. He actually, unfortunately, died in action as a fighter pilot. Right. And, you know, right. because of that, ever since her dad being a fighter pilot, kind of wanted to honor him, she said she was always looking to find that story to tell about a fighter pilot and could never find it until now, which is going to be oh, man. a freaking Star Wars fighter pilot movie with X-Wings, Y-Wings, TIE Fighters. Give it to oh. me. This because Give it to I, me. Because you have you played the new Star Wars video game, Squadrons? I have not yet, but I'm like, dude, t- like chomping at the bit. That that a movie? I mean, come on. Who doesn't like what? Especially what dude doesn't want a fighter pilot movie? And then saying it's I'm a sci-fi you. Star Wars Fighter pilot movie with X. You know, X Wings yeah, are my favorite Star Wars vehicle. I like it more yeah. than the freaking Millennium Falcon. So the fact that we're going to yeah. get so many X Wings in this movie, I'm like geeking out. <laughs> I, I, I mean, dude, when, do you remember when we were at uh, Galaxy's Edge and they had yes. the, the opening presentation and the freaking X Wing lifted off from the rooftop? Yes. Remember that whole thing? I mean, yes. that was like. It, it, to see that in person, so just imagine a whole movie where that kind of stuff. I mean, it just it, it again, like you said, as like a Star Wars fan, and just like that little boy in me comes out. It's just like, oh, it's an X wing, <laughs> or the freaking one one scale X wing they have there next to. Uh, oh, there's two of them. Is there two of them? I don't remember two of them. Yeah, remember they have um they have there Poe is Dameron's. two. You're right. That's in the ride though. That's in the that's, that's in, in the ride that's in the rise of the yes. resistance ride. Yeah, but dude, seeing that for the you know a one one scale X wing in real life, that was a uh, a little bucket list oh, thing for me. Like, oh my god, it's an X for real, <laughs> for real. It was so cool, but yeah, man, to see that—that that is, I am so excited for them. I'm excited for Patty Jenkins. She earned that crap for uh, sure. That is going to be tremendous, and uh, this is going to be basically like Star Wars meets Top Gun, dude. That's basically what this is going to be, and that's just insane, dude. I, I, everyone knows. I say it all the time. The first Wonder Woman movie is still my favorite DCEU movie. So the fact that they got yeah. that oh, yeah. director. To do uh, yes, I'm just I'm all in. I'm all in, I'm all man. In. All in. And, and they they confirmed, and we've known this a little bit, but uh, they they did confirm or elaborate a little bit further on uh, Taika Waititi. Yes, not new news. Also but like getting said, his yeah. own. It's yeah. There's no title. It's untitled, but he is good writing and directing his own Star Wars film. So uh, we'll get more information on that later on. But uh, the big news was Patty Jenkins and, and the Rogue Squadron. That's definitely gonna uh, be huge. Very very excited for that. And it's one of the only uh, Star Wars announcements that's going to theaters <laughs> that they announced yesterday. yeah of, of two yep one of one of one two, of two. Yep. <laughs> yep again that again a very telling all by itself because as we all know star wars is not known for television <laughs> star wars is known for big big spectacle films so the fact that uh of all the announcements we got only two were films uh and th- this is this is, again this is not a forecast 
This was not revealing like information for next year and early no. 2022. This is this inf- this information was for the next four years, four or five years, and that's not to say they won't add to it. Obviously, did they re- did they announce stuff that past 2023? No, not past 2023. But the all of these projections were to through 2024. Okay, all right. Yeah. So the majority of the content they announced was you know from you know between now and 2023, early 2023. Yeah, yeah. They really didn't go past that. But uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff they did, it went quite a ways out. Yeah. But I think, Tim, that brings our Star Wars Hall H segment to a close. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will say a couple of other things that Lucasfilm, the Lucasfilm presentation did go that were also very cool is the Willow series yeah. coming to Disney Plus and the announcement or and just further confirmation of James Mangold writing and directing the next installment of Indiana Jones with Harrison Ford returning uh, to the role. And I think they're going to pass the torch there and that's going to be kind of the lead in. I wonder if that'll go to Disney plus uh, as a series. After I'm only that. interested if they erase uh, the previous Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steven Spielberg directed it and George Lucas produced it. So I'm going to say that is not. All right. Erased. I mean, I guess I lied. I'm still going to watch it, but uh, one could dream one <laughs> could, one could hope. All right. <laughs> a boy. <can> dream. <laughs> but Tim, it's Marvel time. It's, it's it Marvel time. Marvel yeah. mother freaking time. And, you know, they ease this into it. They they start off with, you know, a new WandaVision trailer, a new Falcon uh, Winter Soldier trailer and Loki. We're going to talk about that. But after those is when we start getting the new announcements. But first and foremost, WandaVision, new, brand new spanking trailer. It looks awesome. It's like Dude. one of the most different things I've ever seen. Easily. From the MCU. It's I love yeah. how, like... It's like Leave It to Beaver, I Love Lucy, the Dick Van Dyke show, but with Wanda and Vision. And (laughs) and you can see that like Wanda, because Vision's supposed to be dead, like he's dead. So we would imagine this is her dreaming, like, you know, hallucinating of Vision still being alive within whatever reality or dream state she's in. And this trailer is the first trailer we really see that like she's stuck somewhere. Something's glitching out. The people in these worlds with her are glitching. And then towards the end of the trailer, we even see that like, hey, the Mind Stone, we see it. It's like reformed, which had me like, right. hey, is she is she or someone else putting it back together? Is, is like by the end of this series, are they bringing Vision back? Like, because we know if anyone could do it, yep. Wanda can do it. I mean, in the freaking comics, she's the one who got rid of all, like pretty much all mutants exactly right. on Earth. The House of so, M story. Yeah, right? so if she could get rid of almost all mutants on Earth, I'm pretty sure she could bring an android back to life. So that, that right. that's uh, that's my theory, and I'm just really excited for it. It's the first live action MCU uh, Disney Plus series we're gonna get, uh, and I, I'm yep. stoked. I'm stoked for it. Yeah, they actually released the, uh, the or they dropped the release date a few weeks back. We actually forgot to mention it several mm-hmm. times, but it, it's it, that's dropping on January 15th. That's gonna be our first uh, MCU Disney Plus series, and it looks super super different. That's that for me was the biggest thing that stood out. We've known that for a long yeah. time. We've actually talked about it here. Um, but, um, it is by far, it looks like the most different and unique thing that the MCU's put out to date, I think. But it also, what we saw in this longer form trailer, it was the first time we really got to look at like what this is going to be like. It's kind of a, a creepy, weird, um, almost, uh, Pleasantville, not Pleasantville. <laughs> what's the name of that? Um, the Stepford Wives yeah, is what mm-hmm. I'm thinking. Uh, it's going to be kind of in that vein where there's something off, there's something wrong. I mean, Pleasantville works. Out. That's kind of, that kind of, I yeah, that Pleasantville <laughs> kind of works too, but yeah, I was thinking step. Yeah, both work. Uh, but um, the the thing that uh, I, for me it kind of became evident is oh, this is definitely tying into the next Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness film. Like this is going to have oh, direct. Yeah. I mean, Feige straight connection. up said that. Like it literally yeah, leading yeah, into they it. Did. Yeah. But I kept watching like what they were, you know, the little bit they were giving us about it, and I kept going like, how is this going to be? related to that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I I couldn't see the 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 through line there and that w- after we saw this longer form trailer it was like, "Oh, I see what you're doing." Okay. So there's something really fishy going on and this is going to directly tie us into what is happening in that film. And he, they did say that they're actually shooting in London right now that mm-hmm. that um uh Elizabeth Olsen is actually over there shooting with the the production team. Uh, right now. Yep. So that's that was that made it even more exciting for me. And it looks fantastic. And again, right in line with what we were saying before, where just that same cinematic MCU quality, man. Uh, it's, it's again, I said, I'll say it again. The John Hammond spared no expense. No, dude. It uh, Yeah, it looks just like I mean, it is. It is. They literally are just doing just breaking up the movies and releasing them on, on Disney Plus. They spared no expensive, which yeah. is I mean. It's the future, I guess. They're they're making it the future. Like this is gonna be it a is. thing. Like Marvel was the kind of the 
the first one to be like, hey, you know our movies? Yeah, we're going to do TV shows, and they're going to be tied into our movies, and their characters we introduce on Disney Plus are going to make it into the movies, which is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's the most – it makes Crazy. sense that Marvel's doing it too because that's how comics are in general as far as continuity. There's crossovers and multiverses and every- everything all the time. So, you know, they've been doing it since 2008 with the first Iron Man. And be like, we got an idea. How about we pretty much do what the comics already do? And that'll work, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Pretty much. You know what I mean? I mean, they they definitely saw, clearly, they definitely saw a general direction of things. Mm-hmm. And then they got ahead of it. So good on them because it's, it's looking like it's going to come together nicely. For sure. But next up, Falcon Winter Soldier. We got a trailer for that. Our very first look. Our very Real first look. look. At this. It is, it's everything that I, I'm assuming you too, but it's everything I wanted it to be. It's a buddy cop like yep. <laughs> movie with, or TV show rather, with superheroes. You know what I mean? It's, we're getting more <laughs> of like that banter with Falcon and Winter Soldier, you know, with Winter Soldier at the end of the trailer saying, I hate yep. you. Like, that's like some of the best stuff from the Civil War movie that, that you know, ultimately led to the creation of this uh, TV show because everyone loved their banter right. and their, their chemistry. So, right. like, let's make the, let's give them their own show. Yeah. But, dude, that sequence where Falcon is running away from that like you know a black hawk or that attack helicopter incredible the again it speaks to like oh so this is a movie that we're just getting on on a a streaming service like holy he's going through like these canyons and mountains and explosions and like what is what is happening? I'm I'm just so thankful I have a, a Dolby a surround sound in my house because I'm like it would be so unfortunate <laughs> that I wouldn't get to uh, hear that uh, <laughs> that majestic uh, um, sound mix um, if I did it. So I'm I'm really stoked for it. Baron Zemo looks awesome. We got a brief glimpse of him in here. Yes. We know he's gonna be the uh, the main big bad in this series. And then freaking U.S. Agent. We see U.S. Agent in this freaking series because yeah, the narration man. in the trailer tells us you know that the people need someone to look to for hope. So the government's all like, and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s all like, I guess, hey, we'll give you someone, U.S. agent, <laughs> while Winter Soldier <laughs> and Falcon are doing their own thing. Obviously, it's all, obviously all going to intertwine, and I'm very curious to see uh, where it goes and how that leads to the future movies and you know Disney Plus series in the MCU. Yeah, There are so many. There's just so many things you could count on. Again, for the sake of time, though, I will just stick to, I agree 100%. It, it was right in line, just big spectacle. There is no drop-off in terms of quality between the actual films and what we see, what we've seen from the MCU to date, what we've come to expect and what we're seeing in these trailers and what these shows are going to be look like Falcon and winter soldier looks like, and and, in the chemistry between Mackie and Sebastian Stan just looks so So good. It's just unbelievable. That, that whole part where he goes, first of all, Anthony, this is this show. Anthony Mackie is just perfect for this. Right? Yeah, that whole the, the just the antagonistic, <laughs> annoying, yeah. right, buddy in the in the cop duo. Um, but he where he's just like, are you glitching out again? Is it glitching? Is it is it messing with your brain? <laughs> like the whole thing, yeah. so so good. Um, but I think honestly, of all of the things that we actually got a first look at yesterday, this is the one that's mo- the most right up my alley in terms of the actual style. Okay. I'm the most excited for this. Second would be Loki. Oh, um, in terms Loki. of, I'm talking about the stuff that we got our first look at, <laughs> right. right? Because we there's a lot more that we're going to get into yeah. here in a second. Uh, but I, I'm really excited about Falcon and Winter Soldier. It it kind of blew my mind just how good it actually looks. Oh yeah, it, it it looks really really good. But you mentioned Loki, so let's move on to Loki because we got our first trailer for yes, that. Yes, sir. Dude, dude. So as we know in uh, Endgame, you know when they would dealt with trying. So as we know, in Endgame, it dealt with time travel and stuff like that. And when they went back in time to the first Avengers movie, they locked up that, you know, Loki. And that time, he got the Tesseract, and he teleported. This show shows you where that Loki went. And it's crazy. He yes, was basically exactly. abducted by the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, which is crazy that they're introducing that <laughs> into the MCU. Uh, for those for people who don't know, they're basically like... The, they're basically like a government or police force that governs like uh, realities and or like multiverses right. to make sure like everything's right. in order and things people aren't messing up the timelines and stuff so much. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. And it seems like Owen Wilson is heading up that division or one of the main agents at, the, at that division. And he's like interrogating Loki and stuff like that. But it seems like mm-hmm. in this series, Loki's going to be bouncing around a bunch of different timelines. And the, the biggest thing for me, well, there's two things for this trailer that I noticed. One, we got the freaking homage of the Chris Hastings Loki story, Vote for Loki, where Loki wa- wants to be the president of the United States. That's literally how the trailer yep. ends. He looks ripped right out of the comics with the horns from that cover and story, with the Vote yep. for Loki badge. I'm like, oh my God, that is Chris Hastings must be like, 
this is amazing. I'm seeing, you know, like my story, like actually come to life. So I was geeking out about that because, you know, I love when they take things directly from the comics and, you know, incorporate it into the MCU and and or just live action movies in general. Right. But I don't know if you caught this one as the trailer was going through and stuff like that. And you see all these weird realities and even scenes that look straight out of Endgame. Did you see Black Widow in the trailer? I so, did. Yes, sitting on on that rock. As we know, she sacrificed herself in Endgame, yep. and Loki's going through all these dimensions and realities and maybe death, and apparently he's going to come in contact with freaking Black Widow, yep. like a dead Black Widow. Like, what mm-hmm. Does that mean we're going to see other characters who died? And it just, What's happening, Tim? <laughs> what, what's it, happening? What's, what's so interesting about that is that, if you remember, there were, that was rumored that she was going to appear mm-hmm. in this series, and, and I, we were like... So many of us were like, no, yep. how would they do that? How would that work? Uh, you know, alternate realities and all that kind of thing. We alternate dimensions. We get that. But, um, but you know, would she come back for this and that sort of thing? And this confirmed sure is. So <laughs> cool, man. Like, it, like I told you before we started uh, recording when we were just geeking out about it like yesterday and stuff like that. I'm like, it's going to be so cool because we've seen Loki fight, obviously. Right. But this is like solely Loki. So we're going to see him with his two daggers and freaking like <laughs> magic and stuff ripping people to shreds. And I cannot wait. I mean, I mean, Tom Hiddleston is like he's Loki, right? He's one of the best characters the MCU has, has given us. He, it, to me, he's just he's up there with Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, where like they are Iron yeah. Man, they are Captain America. He is Loki. Like you cannot recast anyone else to be Loki. Like that's him. So the fact that we're getting to see him again after his supposed death uh, at the beginning of Infinity War, I am. Very, very excited and to see where this goes. And the fact that they're pulling from the comics. I mean, yeah. dude, that again, that end shot where they literally are just mimicking like verbatim the the vote for Loki uh comic story. So good. So so good. Yeah, I think the, that I, you just nailed it right on the head. I think this is such a cool way to kind of cap off and say farewell to this character mm-hmm. by giving him just a salute to many of his storylines and 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 some of the many of the uh the I guess, presentations or interpretations of the character that we've seen in comics over the years and just toy with a lot of Mm -hmm. them through this kind of like, you know, this missing gap of time where we see him disappear uh, when he grabs a Tesseract in uh, Endgame and then he reappears after the fact. We, you know, where we see that uh, Thor has wrangled him back in. Uh, But yeah, I think that this is going to be a ton of fun. One of the things that I'm very curious to see is how will it tie in? Will it just be a series that fills in gaps and gives us a a nice send off for Loki as a character in the MCU? Or is this going to be more and add something additional to the direction of the MCU? I'm really excited to see that. For sure, because now that you're dealing with time, you know, and... uh you know, timelines and stuff like that, you could very well have this Loki come back to present and just be Loki again. You know what I mean? Exactly, They could just bring Loki back. So very excited for that. But the next one, Tim, is probably, I think it's my favorite Marvel announcement. I think. It's it's definitely top two. I I don't, I'm like fighting with myself because Loki's uh, uh, pretty high up there. uh, But, you know, what if the I you everyone who's listened to Varian or watched it and stuff like that for years knows I'm a massive fan of Elseworlds type stories like alternate version characters and what if stuff I love like the idea of taking this character and I'll be like but what if this happened you know what I mean like what what if this changed this one scenario would change everything in this character's life you know what I mean and that's exactly what what if it what if is it's, it's basically like the Elseworlds. Uh, of DC but for Marvel and this is an animated series that's going to explore like what if you know Black Panther became Star-Lord what if uh, Peggy Carter became Captain America and it's voiced by all the same people who voice these characters in the live action MCU and the animation looks very very cool it's like that hyper like it's like realistic but still super stylized and definitely cartoony it just looks so good. And from the trailer, we see there's going to be, again, we're going to see uh, Black Panther. What if he became Star-Lord? What if Peggy Carter became Captain America? What if mm-hmm. uh, see we see two Doctor Stranges fighting, which is really weird. So that, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm in. Uh, zombie Captain America, which I hope is Marvel Zombies. Please, please, please give me Marvel Zombies because we see Winter Soldier fighting uh, zombie <laughs> Captain America on what seems to be a train car, and it's everything I've ever wanted. We also see a brief glimpse of, right. of Thor uh, in there real quick. So this, I just love it. And it's being narrated by The Watcher, voiced by Jeffrey freaking Wright, who's also playing yeah, uh, Jim Gordon in The Batman. He's also in... Uh, 
Westworld. He's just an amazing actor. His voice is phenomenal. And the way the trailer ends, where he's like asking the question, where it asks the question, and then you see like the font come in, what if? And then if he's like, <laughs> what if? And I'm like, yes, yes, Jeffrey Wright, yes. Tell me, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm so excited just because the what if universe opens up a realm of possibilities, and the fact that it's animation, meaning you could literally do anything. You don't have to worry about budget, location. You could just go balls to the wall, and I'm so excited yeah. to see what these creative minds behind the MCU are gonna do with now the freedom to literally do whatever the heck they want. Yeah, man, I'll tell you that I was incredibly surprised. I, I want to let me temper that a little bit. <laughs> I wasn't that surprise but i was surprised just at just how good what if looks mm -hmm. i was expecting it to be kind of an add-on you know what i mean to what disney was doing or what marvel was doing uh with the disney plus shows kind of just like a fun add-on uh for you know you know like a fam like almost like a family more of a family kid oh, it's show. got a darker tone for sure without any doubt like yep. th this this it surprised me the tone was a little bit darker um, but they, I mean, they took this seriously mm -hmm. and it, the animation looks incredible. Um, the cast that they lined up for this thing, as you said, just everything about it looks phenomenally good. So I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm super stoked for this. And it, you know, just to know that, you know, after all th this long wait, you know, and all of these delays to have WandaVision coming January 15th. Uh, and as soon as that wraps up, we're going to be kicking off Falcon Winter Soldier in March, yeah. right? And then immediately, as soon as that finishes up, we're going to be kicking off Loki and Black Widow will be dropping in May. Uh, and then we're just going to be going, it's going to be like every yes, other month, we're going to be getting a new piece of Marvel content rolling out either on Disney Plus or in cinemas or, you know, or in theaters, a, a combination of the two. Because, you know, What If comes out, I believe, in July or sometime late in summer as does Shang-Chi uh, in late, uh, I think it's July of 2021. So it's going to be Marvel. It, we're going to have more serious Marvel content rolling out literally almost every other month going into 2021. It is comic book overload. Especially yeah. Because this, we're only talking about like, as far as comic book stuff, we're only talking about like, you know, the Marvel stuff, which is a lot of stuff on its own, but we know Ton. DC fandom, <laughs> there we're getting a lot of yeah. stuff on that end too, but we've already talked about that stuff. But like you said, it's cool to know that once like WandaVision finishes, then we're getting uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. And then once that finishes, then we're getting like, yeah, no, uh, literally. then we're getting uh, Loki and then what if. So it's like literally once one finishes, you just have to wait like two, three weeks and then the next one's going to start right back up. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Cause again, we, you've got the Eternals that's going to be sitting there. That's going to hit in November. And between then uh, you're also going to have, like I said, Shang-Chi in July. And then you've got Eternals in November. The uh, Miss Marvel is going to be dropping late 2021 on Disney plus as is Hawkeye is also going to land, I think in late fall sometime. So you're going to go from Shang-Chi in July to Hawkeye sometime in the fall to Eternals in November and, and Miss Marvel sometime toward the end of the year. And then it's just going to pick right up in March, 2022 uh, in the same, in the good keep, just, just keep the party going with the Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness. And after that, you've got, uh, you know, you just keep rolling from there. It's just crazy how much content we're going to get in the next couple of years. Dude, from Marvel. It's, it's freaking ridiculous. It's it's just nutty. But uh, the last bit of uh, uh, teasers we got or trailers is it's more of a sizzle reel, actually. But Miss Marvel. Yeah, we got a Miss Marvel a sizzle reel. They showed us a little bit of footage and stuff like that. And she's going to be the newest character brought to the MCU. And they also confirmed that after she makes her debut in her own series, she's going to be appearing in Captain Marvel 2. That's right. So. I'm very, I'm very, very curious for this series. Me, I, I don't, haven't read much Miss Marvel. I know uh, she was uh, quite popular for a while there, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I'm, I'm obviously gonna watch any MCU series. I'm not like jacked like for this, like I am for like Loki or Falcon or anything. Sure, but uh, who knows? Maybe once I watch it, I'll become a massive fan. So I, I'm all about bringing new characters into the MCU, and hopefully, they're just as good as the ones they've already introduced to us uh, in the past. Yeah, I'm the same as you. I, I, I have not spent much time reading. I'm familiar. With with Kamala Khan and and you know uh, her story and stuff like that, but I'm I'm not a big fan. I haven't spent much time reading it, but I'll certainly give it a shot and see where it goes. I'm really interested to see how it's going to tie into Captain America too. I mean, we know how it does in the comics and everything, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll be really curious to see how, just like with a lot of these other shows, how it's going to tie into the MCU and the cinematic side. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's going to be in uh, I believe in November of 2022. So 
It's just, you know, again, one thing after the other, after so, the other, after the other. So much stuff. Some of the concept art for that did look very cool, I will say. It did look really cool. And even the the short, like, segments they showed from the show, like her dealing with her family at the table and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, maybe this could be, like, a cool, like, more of a, a family-friendly type MCU show or, you know, property mm-hmm. where it's yeah. more, like wholesome i guess kind of like a star yeah, girl yeah, yeah where you you know exactly kind of like star girl but probably better than star girl uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong i, I enjoyed star girl because you know, it was fun and tongue-in-cheek but that's exactly what it was it was very like you know a little hokey yeah. and it was fun but you know i think the mcu even with miss marvel is going to take it a little more seriously and definitely their budget definitely the budget is going to be a, a lot bigger a than lot star better, girl so yeah. if anything it's definitely going to look and feel a, a lot better than star girl which again i'm not hating on star girl I, I liked it but you know this is this is the mcu sure, we're yeah. talking about okay not <laughs> yeah it's definitely a different level in terms of quality without doubt yeah it's a different level of show for sure so that's the last uh trailer teaser and or sizzle reel we got from uh marvel and the mcu but that is definitely definitely not the last announcement and or piece of news no no we no, got no, no. from marvel. i will say it did surprise me that we did not get a first look at hawkeye or eternals or shang chi yeah well i mean be- the reason i say hawkeye that's true shang chi especially because that uh-huh. comes out july but the 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 um hawkeye i was surprised because we know they're already filming and they gave us a tease and, you know, some concept art and some other stuff for Miss Marvel, but we didn't see a thing for Hawkeye. Nope. Um, and that was actually supposed to come out earlier than the fall. So I was a little surprised that we didn't see more about that. Um, and, and you're right, uh, Shang-Chi as well. Yeah, I, you know, I, I wonder if they're, like, trying to, like, because since they're in production and they're, like, a lot of them are in post right now, I wonder if they're trying to just kind of, like, we're not going to talk about that because we don't exactly know when we're going to be releasing yeah. it and where it's going to fall on our timeline because the world's crazy right now. So let's look at all these new things that's mm-hmm. coming out five years, four years from now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look, it's shiny. Look at this. <laughs> uh, but uh, one of those new shiny things that they announced was I'm going to I'm going to go with the, the two here that are really big storylines that they're bringing in to uh, the MCU and Disney Plus, which is Armor Wars and Secret Invasion. Yeah, man. Which we were talking for a long time. We thought the Secret Invasion was going to be like the big overarching event for like this next right. phase that we're going exactly. in, right? Which especially after Far From Home, yeah. right? For sure. But now, but Armor Wars is also a massive story that could be that could you could definitely make into a big overlapping story as well. But both of these are getting their own shows, so. To me, I'm like, that's amazing, Mm -hmm. but does that mean they're going to be dumbed down a little bit, like more condensed? I I think that's the better way to phrase it, not dumbed down, but just more condensed. You know what I mean? Whereas it's going to be more simplistic than, because again, Secret Invasion, Feige even said it, which I'm like, yeah, you're right, was one of the biggest events, especially crossover events, Marvel has ever done. Ever done. Yeah. Yeah. Like the amount of people that were like revealed to be scrolls and stuff like that was like, what are you kidding me? What's happening? Right. It changed the game for Marvel uh, proper continuity. So the fact that it's like, just going to be a, a mini series or series. I, again, we don't know too much about it. For all we know, this could that show could spark into the the greater MCU in the movies. But what's cool is we know that Samuel Jackson is going to be that's right uh, heavily involved in the series and one of the main characters. Along, well, he's repi- yeah he's reprising his role as Nick Fury as is Ben, ben Mendelsohn as uh, as uh, um, Talos. Our boy, our boy. I love me some Ben Mendelsohn, man. He was so oh, good yeah. in Rogue One. I'm not to go back to Star Wars, but he was so good <laughs> uh, in that movie. And then Armor Wars is going to be starring um, Don Cheadle as War Machine again. So because right. as we know, when you think Armor Wars, you're like yeah. Tony Stark, because he was alive, obviously, when that whole event was going right. on in the comic books, but he's dead in the MCU, so obviously you have to shift it up, which is going to the next best thing, and that is his partner in crime, right-hand man, the amazing Don Cheadle, uh, reprising his role as War Machine and or the Iron Patriot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, very, very curious to see where that goes again, because, you, you know, that's... That's another huge event where, like, all of Tony's armors are, like, going and being controlled and flying around all these places. Like, yeah, dude. What's ha- and you, you have to imagine this is going to tie in to all the other shows and stuff like that. Because then, not to keep jumping from show to show, but they also, it just ties right in with it. They also announced an Ironheart series, yep. which is Riri Williams, the next, you know, like, Iron Man, so to speak, quote unquote. Right. And you have to imagine she is going to be tied into the Armor War series. Like, those have to overlap. Right, like they have to. I am, I'm, uh, I am almost certain that that will be the case. Yeah. Well, one, again, I'm a little all over the place, but it's kind of connects. Well, one, I'm excited for Armor Wars, but two, 
how about that? They just dropped on us Ironheart. They're like, okay, yeah. Well, we're we're giving you an Ironheart series because everyone was like, what are you doing yeah, with Iron we're Man? We're going to introduce Riri Williams. Yeah, they're like, what are you doing with Iron Man? Because now he's dead. You have to have an Iron Man. And we speculated we're not the only ones. A lot of people we did. did. But they're bringing in Riri Williams to the MCU. So you know, I'm curious to see where that goes as well. Especially since we just said it's most certainly going to cross over into Armor Wars with Don Cheadle. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of these uh, new, these surprise series um, that we didn't know were fully coming. Some of them were speculated. Some of them were rumored. A lot of these things like Armor Wars and Secret Invasion, I think it does give us a sneak peek. And I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there uh, with um, these are going to, I think, springboard um, massive. Because again, all of these tie in to directly to the MCU cinematic side. So I think this is going to springboard because that, uh, um, that series with Nick Fury and Talos kind of that bed, it's going to be like a buddy cop, but they're going to be investigating and they're going to be diving into these faction of scrolls that have infiltrated earth for, for, for years. Right. And how is that going to tie back into Captain Marvel the, and their appearances in those films? How is it going to tie into uh, what their appearance in the Star Wars or the Spider-Man films, rather? Uh, but more importantly, what characters is it going to reveal as scrolls in that mm-hmm. series, right? We don't know when the release date for this show nope. is. They didn't announce that. So we don't know where it's going to land in the timelines for the overall Marvel Universe. But I don't think it's an accident that we're going to be seeing you know, the Secret Invasion uh, limited series come out, that's probably going to launch new storylines that are going to be massive in the end. Um, and I also don't think, like you said, I don't think it's a coincidence that around the same time, probably bundled in a, in, in a similar time, you know, time frame that we're seeing uh, the next three series, WandaVision, Falcon, Winter Soldier, and Loki come out, uh, that we're going to be seeing like Secret Invasion, Ironheart, and Armor Wars, where Ironheart obviously... You know, Riri Williams comes in, she becomes the next Iron Man, and she's helping to battle back and, you know, reclaim Tony Stark's technology that falls into the wrong hands alongside War Machine. And it all kinds of ties into, you know, the same storyline. Uh, so, you know, you've around that time, or in that window of time, I guess you could say, you're also seeing these other massive announcements that we got yesterday uh, that we're, you know, we'll get into um, here in a second because there's a bunch of other shows. Uh, or several, I should say, that, you know, I don't, that they're kind of off on their own. But one of the bigger other series for Marvel Plus that they they landed on was in She-Hulk, mm-hmm. right? Where they confirmed that Tatiana Maz- uh, Maslany is going to play She-Hulk, right? But they also announced that Tim Roth is coming abomination. back to play the Abomination. Yeah. And that Mark Ruffalo is going to appear in the show as Hulk. If his arm is still like mangled, horribly mangly damaged. Oh man. I'm going to be so I mad. I will be furious. <laughs> I'll be furious. Ugh. I you, no one will be more livid than Although me. Although <laughs> we we do know Feige inadvertently confirmed cuz everyone was speculating like how are you going to do She-Hulk? Like is it, you know, you're just going to put a girl in uh uh, green makeup and stuff like that. He said, like she's like mm-hmm. six, seven, seven foot tall. So we know she's gonna be, you yeah. know, digital, just CG, CG yeah. just like uh, Mark Ruffalo Hulk, which is good. I think that's that's how you should do it. Yeah, that's yeah. that is definitely mm-hmm. a very good thing. It'll be mocap yeah. and all of that kind of thing. That's yep. a very good thing. But my question about bringing Abomination back and Tim Roth and tying back into that film is it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying and what you were saying about. You know, this is all going to tie in together and then it opens up the door of like, okay, if they're bringing back Tim Roth as the abomination, we know that we also saw the birth of the leader in Mm -hmm. that film. You know, will the leader somehow play Mm -hmm. a role um, in in all of this because they never concluded or, or kind of wrapped that portion up? So there's a lot of things that can happen here um, that can uh, all kind of tie in together and that kind of leads us well that's not even mentioning moon Knight, but we we can't really get into that because we they didn't really give us anything new they just said oh yeah moon Knight's coming but that's gonna tie in but they did confirm it's gonna be very heavy with the egyptian theme and we're gonna see like all that stuff yes gonna be, take place like in egypt and those sets and stuff. like it's gonna be awesome it's because we were speculating it's that, gonna like be epic, is it gonna have yeah. that mummy feel where we see like you know the archaeologists and stuff like that yes it's gonna have pyramids yeah. we're gonna have sphinx we're gonna have conchu <laughs> it's gonna be all that good stuff <laughs> It's going to be epic, but uh, they didn't give us any kind of like no, no, details no. that where we could say, okay, this is how it's going to tie in. But obviously it's going to tie into all of the other stuff. Somehow he's going to play a role in all this or not just introducing as the same, same thing goes for blade, right? They confirmed mm-hmm. again that they're going to, not only are they making blade, but it's going to be a film and he's going to play a role in all this, but they didn't elaborate. No, unfortunately right? not. So 
but you know, all these series are going to tie in together. And they're clearly the one thing that we did get from all of this is that it's the, the, the storylines going forward in the MCU are all going to be the catalysts for the storylines are all going to come from these series that we're going to be getting on Disney plus. I think that is becoming very oh, clear for sure. that the, the mm-hmm. movies are going to elaborate on the storylines that are, are presented originally in the Disney plus series, which is really mm-hmm. exciting because then that leads you to, again, just talking about how all those shows are going to tie together and how it's going to kind of expand and, and kind of springboard these storylines. Some of the news that we got, the bigger news and for me out of the MCU that was just like whoa, like falling in line with the Hayden Christensen as returning as Darth Vader, uh, like mind blown, uh, is like where we got the news of who Christian Bale is going to be playing in Thor: Love and Thunder, which is Gore the God Butcher. I have a theory, right? That is an amazing cast. I know you I have, have theories, theory. and I want and I want to hear them. But I mean, just the simple fact that we learned that. That tells you right there, like this is going, they're about to set off and it's, they're about to set off in phase four on a massive storyline. And you can't mention that without mentioning the other part, which is that um, in Ant-Man and the Wasp, the second Ant, or the third Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, Quantumanium, we are also getting introduced to Kang the freaking Conqueror. Yeah, we knew that, though. They announced that a while ago. I know, but I'm saying, like, you can't mention that without saying, okay, these two characters are going to be existing simultaneously in the same phase and not know this is going to be a massive overarching storyline. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's it's just so freaking much, man. Crazy. <laughs> it, 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 it's just too much. But, like, you can't. we can't just go over uh the thor the thor announcement <laughs> no 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 <laughs> because no, no, no. The, the fact that they're bringing gore the god butcher into the mcu and the fact that batman himself <laughs> is playing him is insane but it's also very telling to where they might be going with the future of thor in the mcu my only question is yeah if you're bringing gore in which you know was is an insanely you know popular and powerful character uh, for Thor over the last uh, several years, brutal. You you got it. You got to keep Hemsworth in here for you know the foreseeable future, right? Oh yeah. Like you can't just be like I'm bringing in Gore the God uh, Gore uh, the God Butcher, and now Hemsworth is out. No 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 no. Because as we know, with Gore the God Butcher, you're also gonna have like the Necro Sword, right? And if you have the Necro Sword, where exactly. does that come from? Null. No 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 no. Meaning exactly. Meaning is this the, the setup? For ultimately, a few years from now, introducing freaking the Lord of the Abyss, Null himself, because that would be Bro. that would because that would be your new Thanos. That would be it. That would be your Thanos, yeah, without like, a doubt. That, that is your that is your way to introduce a character that is just as powerful as Thanos, arguably more powerful than Thanos, actually, because he's literally the god of the void. He's like he's a god. He's not like yep, yep. you know a titan. He's a freaking god. So bringing this character in that has all this long lineage to like the Celestials, which we're gonna see in the Eternals, so you could link it there. Uh, obviously Venom, which we don't know what Sony is doing with that in Spider Man and Venom, but we know you know they're doing lots of stuff with Spider Man uh, in the third movie. We don't know what the future is gonna be after that because of contract issues with Tom Holland and Spider Man and all that stuff. But it would be very telling and make a lot of sense to bring in a character that's so popular and doing so well in the comics right now into the MCU. Like, that would be crazy. And right. if they did, I have a fan cast. A fan cast for Null would be Killian Murphy. Tell me Killian Murphy wouldn't Dude. kill it as Null. He would be amazing. That that could be I solid. I think he would do could such a good job. I mean, come on. Like, Peaky Blinders. Scarecrow, this guy's amazing, and he's got he could be that. <laughs> I, I'm just picturing him in like the makeup and you know the face white and the sunken in cheeks and the long black hair with like the red you know symbiote symbol on. Oh man, oh man, I want it, Tim. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want that to happen, <laughs> dude. The, the the when these announcements, the I would say these two announcements alone, they blew the doors off of like what's possible. I would say the Gore the God Butcher uh, announcement was like the big one for me. That for the yeah. Marvel side, that was like the 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 Darth Vader's coming back, mind blown uh, moment of the the entire Marvel presentation was 
They're introducing Gore the God Butcher. Holy crap. Now I see why they need another Thor with Natalie Portman. <laughs> Jane Foster, right? Okay, now we know why there needs to be a couple of Thors at the same time. Because in the comics, Gore the God Butcher just wrecks Thor. Yeah, he's, he's literally called the God occasions. Butcher. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just wrecks yeah. Thor. Um, and it takes a couple of Thors in one of the storylines to finally beat him back uh, and, and defeat him in the end. But the fact that they're doing this and introducing, again, because like you said, Gore the God Butcher is currently playing a role in uh, Marvel's Thor series and so forth. Um, it is very curious of, okay, how far down this road are you oh, going to go? Is this going to be like more classic storylines or are you going to start tapping in to what Donny Cates is doing in comics, yeah. man. If you're doing, because we know for a fact, again, this will go to one of the other things that we have to talk about very quickly, is the Fantastic Four are also getting Dude. introduced. We don't have any timelines, but they finally confirmed, yep, Fantastic Four is in fact happening. They touched on it. I don't know if everybody remembers, but very, very briefly, uh, they just kind of winged it and threw it out there at the end of Hall H a couple of years ago. If you didn't remember that, that's crazy. They that was literally the end. That's how they capped it. That's like the like right. That's it's the, like oh yeah. As excited as I am for Thor and everything else, and you know all the all my theories with possibly bringing in Null. Like realistically, the biggest announcement they made was definitely the Fantastic Four. Like, yeah. like it, like it or not, it's because it's Marvel's first family, dude. And yes, they've got two movies already, but those were like before the MCU was a thing. They were their own thing with Fox. Like, I like I like the Fantastic Four movies. They were fun. They came out when I was really young and stuff like that. I like them, but I want an MCU Marvel proper first family and I need John Krasinski. Heck yeah! And I need John Krasinski to be Mister Fantastic and Emily blunt to be the invisible woman because that would be <laughs> the best thing to ever happen to the that mcu since chris evans and robert downey jr being cast as captain america and iron man that's what i need i need that <laughs> yeah i hope they can pull that off because that is the perfect casting and and you know at this point i think any if the mcu comes to you and says hey do you right. want to before you even get the rest of it out the actor is going yes yes whatever it is yes i'll do it uh, so if that's what they want, they're going to get it. For sure. But it also makes sense why they're introducing Kang, right? Because Kang the Conqueror, he's yeah, a Fantastic oh yeah. Four villain. So it makes so much sense. We're like, oh, that's exactly. why you're introducing him in that, mo that movie. Yeah, honestly, that was my point. That's why I brought up Fantastic Four is because you see them with the direction that they're going. It's like, okay, now you're introducing Fantastic Four, right? And we know that Donny Cates has been, he hasn't been tied into, he hasn't written the Fantastic Four book, but he's, you know, he's part of the X-Men universe and we know what they're doing with X-Men in comics where the Fantastic Four and the X-Men are directly related uh, and work, you know, and that sort of a thing. A lot of their storylines are crossing and have been for a little while. So it's like, are we going to be seeing more tie-ins to what Donny Cates have been doing? Because we know they also own the X-Men and they're going to come along at some point. Oh, right? they're definitely coming along for sure. A matter of time. Yeah, without any doubt. So it's, it's just a matter of time. So it's like, are we moving into a direction where we're going to be seeing them tie into and tap into what Donny Cates have been doing? And that's what Gore the, you know, Gore the God Killer wait a minute. Uh, is going to be Tim, doing? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They killed Odin in the in the Ragnarok, right? Odin, dead, gone. Right. As we know, in the comics, dead, <laughs> uh, in the comics, Odin, dead, right? And what happens when he dies? Where, who, where does his power, the Odin force, get transferred to? Freaking... Thor. Then what happens? Yep. He becomes the king of gods, essentially, like the most OP Thor we've ever seen. If they do that <laughs> in Bro. the freaking MCU, dude, like this is this is me just fanboying out completely. But now I'm like bringing the Black Winter. Yeah. I want him to fight Galactus because now you have the Fantastic Four. You already know we're doing Fantastic Four in the MCU, so now you can introduce Galactus. That means I want this God Thor to fight Galactus. Bring in the Black Winter. Bring in Null. I want it all. <laughs> 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 like when the wheels are turning, Feige, give me a call, <laughs> dude. It, it, the, I'm telling you, the amount of stuff that they announced, and the fact that all of this stuff is going to get rolled out in the next three years, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it is going to be head spinning. The amount of how quickly this content we're starts not even to roll done. out, starting at the beginning we're of 2021. Not even done. No, we're not even. We haven't even finished <laughs> the list for the it's love of God. Insane. And it's going to be, and, and that really does pose the question, right, of how on earth are you going to tie all this together? Because we haven't even touched on, like, how does Shang-Chi uh, uh, Shang play a role, right? How does, you know, uh, uh, freaking, um, 
what's the other movie that <laughs> what's so that other thing the, they're the doing? Cap- Eternals? Captain Marvel. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, Eternals, yeah. Like the multiverse of madness and all of the, 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 the where they're breaking open the multiverse. How is that going to play a role in all this and how is it going to connect? Captain Marvel, how they've been building her up as the new Superman of the Marvel, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. How is, what's her role going to be in all this? It seems to, in all of these announcements, it, was, it felt kind of minimized. I don't know if oh, you picked sure. up on that. But obviously she's going to play a huge role. You know, the quantum verse. Quantum mania. Quantum mania, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, Crazy, Which is that's pretty crazy bro. for me. Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. I'm like, okay. Well, first I think of uh, uh that Disney ride, the Buzz Lightyear, uh, or, or no, Toy Story, Toy Story Mania. Yeah, we're right, right. <laughs> Toy right, Story yeah. Mania, but Quantum Mania. So I'm like, all right. So they're definitely continuing the Quantum Verse stuff, but that could have huge ramifications, obviously, for the greater MCU. And I wonder where that's ultimately going to lead because with that. You could do a lot of things when you're talking about the quantum verse. You yeah. know what I mean? So, Quantum Mania sounds kind of like it's still going to be fun, like very Ant Man y, like the first two movies where it's going to be yeah, lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we as we know, Ant Man played a massive role in Endgame, capping off the first 10 years right. of freaking the MCU. It was all because of the quantum verse and him that they were able to like go back in time and reset everything and like, you know, save the day essentially. So, you know, I, I, I'm very, very curious to see what that's all about. Because, again, they just said a lot of stuff. Like, Fantastic Four, it's coming. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, it's right. coming. Like, Black right. Panther 2, it's coming. Like, they just said things and didn't really say much. Although, we do have confirmation with Black Panther 2 that Marvel will not be yep. recasting a Black Panther. They will not be giving and recasting a new Black Panther. At least they won't be recasting T'Challa. Right. No, yeah, so that, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, T'Challa, so they, yes. Right. We, yeah. So they will not be recasting the role of T'Challa. However, there will be a Black Panther. We do have confirmation of that. That was the two big takeaways, and that was big news, and I, I think rightly so. We talked about it a few weeks back on, you know, after the tragic death of Chaz Bozeman, you know, do they recast? Do they not recast? And I think both of us agreed um, the, the right thing that they should do is Especially not now. It's way too soon, man. Like, way too soon. Way too soon. Yeah. You're talking about that movie is scheduled to come out in July of 2022. That That is really soon. That Again, they that means they already have to be in pre-production. That, that person has to be preparing. And there's just no way to do that. And, you know, I don't think they should. He, he, he was so iconic in that role that I just don't see how you no. recast it. It's, for me, that's like recasting Luke Skywalker. I know that might be... A little bit of an exaggeration in terms of like right, the, the yeah, legendary, yeah. iconic, long term, but I think for that role, honestly, I think he had that big of an impact I'm, on that role in the MCU and for a lot of people. So I, I, I think that they made the right decision here, and I'm very curious to see who will take up the mantle. I think both of us agree it's probably going to be sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you're again, if you're if you're a comic guy, you know she became Black Panther in the comics, so it makes the right. most sense to like. Yeah, you already right. introduced her. She's she was. I said it when I when we first watched uh, Black Panther. Uh, you know, literally coming out the theater. I'm like, dude, I think she was my favorite character in the movie, even maybe more so than Black Panther himself. She's like, she right, was right, so right. likable, so sweet. Like so, and she's the one who comes up with all the Black Panther tech. Like she's the brains. So it's yeah, like yeah. now she could just make herself the tech and you know go out there fighting crime herself. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, Ryan Coogler's back at the helm writing and directing it. He's got a very, very, he's got a heavy burden uh, to try and figure out how to make, you know, how to t- tell this story now um, with a, a proper, you know, send off and explanation for, you know, the, the death or the loss of T'Challa. Um, and then, you know, Shuri, if that is in fact who picks up the mantle, which we both anticipate, I think most people do how they're going to make that transition. And then even further, what role is Wakanda going to play in this huge overarching uh, story and new phase that we're headed into with all this other, these other stories and characters that are happening simultaneously. So that, that, that he's got a, that he's got himself quite a uh, he, task. He bit. does. He's, he's hard at work, but I, I believe he can do it. I think he'll, he'll be able to, I do too. Yeah. He, he, he killed yeah. it with the first one. So I, I have full confidence, especially with Kevin Feige right, right behind him. You know, you know, supporting him and his his talent. Uh, it's going to yep. be pretty And that good. rolls us into, I believe these are the last two big announcements because we already talked about Hawkeye and all, all the other stuff, Armor War, Secret Invasion. But now we got Guardians of the Galaxy. We're getting two things, well, three technically from Guardians of the Galaxy. They confirmed Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy Volume 3, which we, we knew that, we, you know, we knew that, but they knew, yeah. confirmed it yet again. Uh, but they also announced the 
two new things, two new pieces to the Guardians of the Galaxy. One is really fun. One, one is, well, the one, let's see if you're thinking the same one I'm thinking about. Guardians of the Galaxy, the holiday special. That's the that, one, yeah. I, well, what's really cool about this is they're going to shoot it at the same exact time they're shooting volume three of Guardians of the Galaxy. So it's so Hilarious. Just, again, to push the point, this is literally just movie quality. Like they're literally shooting it the same time yeah, exactly. they're shooting like uh, uh, volume three. So I think that's going to be hilarious because I don't know about you, but I immediately went to the Star Wars special back in the day. Obviously, <laughs> exactly, obviously yes. horrible. And, you know, Star Wars fans like to make fun of it and stuff. And like Harrison Ford and everyone was forced to do it contractually. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be in that vein and probably really good because it's James Gunn, Chris Pratt. Uh, you know, Zoe Zeldana, the entire cast. I think this could be really fun. The whole team is yeah, back it's together. Probably gonna yeah, it's probably going to be like a 30-minute, you know, Christmas special. Uh, <laughs> Dave Bautista as Drax is probably going to be hilarious in it. I hope they play, they make him like Santa no Claus doubt. or something. That would be amazing. Or like <laughs> <laughs> Star-Lord has to sit on his lap or something. You could do all kinds of fun things right there. So I'm really, really excited yeah. for that. I think that's a nice – it makes sense too, right? Like for Guardians of the Galaxy – to do, for oh, any yeah. property that the MCU has for them to do a special with them, right? Like, they're essentially Marvel's, like, Star Wars property, right, in that sense? <laughs> without a so. doubt, yeah. With That that ex that is such a great <laughs> description of it, yeah, without a doubt. And I saw James Gunn actually commented on uh, social media at, right after the announcement, and he said that he has been begging Disney to let him do this <laughs> for years that he's so stoked out of his mind. Like he thinks this is the funniest thing. Dude, he's that ever guy done. is living the <laughs> so, life. Can we talk about like, so he, he did the first, he did the first two guardians of the galaxy, then some past like tweets or whatever came out. Then he was kind of shunned by Disney for there. It was like, you know, kicked off guardians of the galaxy volume three. Then Warner brothers was like, Hey, you know, months later, Warner brothers was like, Hey, we'll take you. He's doing suicide squad. We got a teaser. It says we'll go for that. That looks awesome. Then after that, Disney's like, okay, Incredible. you know what? Things calm down. We'll take you back. So now he's got, because of the way things happened, he's got suicide squad and guardians of the galaxy, which are both ensemble movies <laughs> that are like two of the most popular movies in each respective universe for DC and Marvel. So now because of all this, right. like his fall ultimately led to his rise of glory. <laughs> no <laughs> joke. I mean, what a freaking bounce. Dude, amazing. Back. So incredible. And then the last bit uh, uh, of news, at least for Guardians of the Galaxy, I may be missing something. We're going to have to double check here. But uh, the I Am Groot uh, short series, which is going to follow. It's going to be little shorts right. of Baby Groot. And who doesn't love Baby Groot? You know, which is, that's going to be man. Just really, epic. really funny. I think the two cutest things that come out of sci-fi this year is like Grogu and then obviously Baby Groot, who was first. So I, could they cross over? Is that a thing? I mean, Disney owns them both, right? Can we just have some kind of like crossover there? <laughs> that would be quite – maybe James mm -hmm. Gunn could pull it off. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows what they do. But, yeah, the, the the freaking holiday special actually comes out shortly before the um, – fan. Uh, not Fantastic Beast. Why did I want to call it Fantastic Beast before the Guardians of the Volume Galaxy three. holiday special does? So the holiday special preempts – uh, Guardian the Gal uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. So I'm gonna be very interested interested to see how James Gunn ties that in. Uh, it's gonna be fun and funny, but that's gonna hit uh, Disney Plus the Gar the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special in uh, the holidays of 2022. So that, what a that's busy, be busy man. Because again, if we because we've already seen uh, pieces and clips of Suicide Squad, and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. It looks to be like it's gonna be one of the most yeah. fun and cool action-packed uh, DC movies we've got. So one would assume that's going to be super successful is what I'm saying, meaning it's ultimately going to lead to him oh, yeah. doing another one. And then, <laughs> you know, he's obviously continuing uh, Guardians. So it's like, geez, man, good for you. Good for you, James. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, good good yeah. on him. Now, 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 before we wrap up here, because this is, this, we have gone, we have, as we told you from the beginning, there a was lot. a lot to cover. Uh, before we wrap up, this is not something that was discussed during uh, Investor Day, but it is news uh, that came out between uh, our last podcast and today, uh, just before the Investor Day, Disney's Investor Day. Um, but it's rumors about the next Spider-Man movie that they, which they did not talk about. It's, by it's the Sony. Way, at <laughs> Sony's Day. involved. They didn't want to yep. talk about that. Exactly. So they did not. So that I think that was that goes into the category of things they didn't say, but was telling. They did not talk about Spider-Man three, but we got all kinds of rumors and even confirmations about the next Spider-Man movie uh, with Tom Holland. 
uh, which is, of course, we knew Benedict Cumberbatch was likely going to uh, appear as Doctor Strange in a more of in kind of a replacement mentor role for uh, Peter Parker. But uh, and we also heard that Jamie Foxx is going to be back as Electro, which we talked about on the show before. But now we've got confirmation that Alfred Molina <laughs> is going to return as Doc Ock from Spider-Man cool. 2 with Tobey Maguire, which is insane. We also got confirmation that Andrew Garfield is going to be back as the alternate universe <laughs> Peter Parker. Somehow that's going to fit in. They're talking in talks with Kirsten Dunst to return as MJ, and they're also in talks with Toby What's freaking happening? Maguire what is happening? to return as the original Peter Parker. This is crazy. So we have full convers- confirmation that these movies are going full live action like, Spider Verse. These man. people are freaking like my mind's gonna explode. Like this is like crazy. To, you're bringing I'm like you, it's my childhood into like now much. my adulthood and all these awesome things. Because like it like you know we first saw this with like the Flash movie right that's coming out uh, right. in the DCEU right. where they're like hey guess what we're bringing back Keaton Batman. That's right, Keaton Batman's coming back and all that stuff. So, that made your head pop. Yeah, for real. So we know like <laughs> all that stuff is happening. Uh, ben Affleck Batman is uh, going to be in there. So they're doing all these like so much fan service, bringing back all their like all these prior versions of these characters that you've seen and villains. It all mattered is basically what they're saying. They're like, it was oh, just yeah. part of a bigger yeah. multiverse. You know what I mean? So now with the Spider Verse, I mean, it's it's I'm super excited because obviously that's awesome to have the Spider Verse live action and bring back Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, all you know, all the villains from the prior uh, Spider Man franchises. But it's also scary in the sense is like this is probably your transition to get rid of Tom Holland from the MCU. Like, this is your way to get him out into the Sony, like, Spider-Man verse, which I'm like, (sighs) so, like, for me, it's, like, bittersweet where I'm, like, I'm super excited and I'm like, this is awesome, but I would be much more excited if I didn't know that this was most likely going to be his transition out. A farewell. farewell, Which is really, really sad. And I'm also wondering, like, how his contract's going to go, right? Like, does he only contracted for this next movie and then... That's it? Is he going to keep going, doing them with Soli alone? As of right now. You know? As of right now, that's the deal, so, man. So. But, but the bigger picture is, how are you going to, like, it was such a big deal when they announced that that uh, oh, Marvel yeah. made a deal with Sony to bring him into the MCU, and we saw him in Civil War, arguably the best scene in that movie. Probably, at least for me, that was my favorite scene in the movie, that whole airport scene with uh, Spider-Man being introduced. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah. remember that old movie with the big walking thingies? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, like, it was so, so good. And, you know, he was just hitting his stride, and now he's going out. Like, no, I, I, I don't want to think about it. I don't. I really, really don't. Well, again, it kind of goes toward the... <laughs> Spider-Man's my favorite Marvel character, too, right? So it's like, this is the worst know, possible character this yeah, could happen is. with for me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's true. It's true. I mean, it's it, it's still, it's heartbreaking that Marvel made the decision to license out Spider-Man to Sony the way that they did and for them to be in the position with that, with that Ugh, particular so character bad. and that group of characters, I should say, uh, that are in the Spider-Man kind of, uh, you know, world there. Um, so it, it's, it's deeply unfortunate, um, you know, but the good news is, is that we are going to continue to get Spider-Man stories and movies and characters and all this, you know, the development, we're going to still get the Sinister Six. We're still going to get all of this stuff. It's just not going to be likely not going to be tied into the MCU directly. The question is, and the reason I wanted to make sure to cap off with this news is how on earth is this next Spider-Man, which is part of the MCU, Um, How is it going to tie into all this other stuff that they're doing? Because, again, Benedict Cumberbatch is going to play a significant role in the film as Doctor Strange. I mean, I can see how they're going to use him because, again, his movie is the Multiverse of Madness, which means they're busting open the multiverse, which we already got saw teased and everything like that in these in, in Phase Three, the, 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 the toward the end of Phase Three. So I can see how they might be able to use Doctor Strange to somehow. Uh, where Tom Holland ends up getting stuck in another universe or, you know, one where they can't find him or something to, or he places him there uh, for some reason. I don't know, you know, maybe it's something they have, they have to do to close a hole and he just gets stuck yeah. <laughs> in the Sony mult Sony side of the multiverse. <laughs> I don't know. But again, it's just, how is it all going to tie together? And this is the big lift. This is the heavy lift 
with all this content and all these announcements and all this news that we got yesterday and, and all, you know, again, leading up to yesterday um, with the investor day is man, Kevin Feige again has had, he has just given us a Herculean effort in guiding the overall direction of the MCU. This is that what he did in the first three phases, I think in terms of keeping it all mm -hmm. together and making it work is going to be dwarfed by what he has to do yeah. with the he's, next he's got two a, phases. He's got we, a freaking uh, long road ahead of him. But you know, he's got he's like that guy who has a seriously. cork board with like the string, and it's all like tying to each yeah, other. Yeah. <laughs> like, so this means this, and this is going to lead to that, and then this is going to go there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will absolutely say if anybody can do it, he can. I just, man, I'm going to be sitting there with a bucket of popcorn in hand to see exactly how he does it. Because, man, that, like I said, it is going to be a an absolute Herculean effort. I, I, I am very excited for to see where everything goes. Uh, definitely, this this upcoming year, 2021, is going to be Marvel heavy. Because, unfortunately, this year, we didn't get much of any Marvel stuff at all, MCU stuff. So, next right. year... It was yeah, pretty so much next none. year. They're definitely making up for it, like <laughs> for the we, next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like sorry guys, it was a rough year for everyone. Yeah. We're back <laughs> though. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> We've have we have some built up. Yeah. <laughs> we have some built up things. We got to release. We chatted with the mouse. We've strategized. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it is going to be heavy. And again, like you said, once you combine that with the stuff that we're getting and we have coming Dude, from DC it's so in 2021 much. and 2022, starting with uh, Wonder Woman. It's bro. It's going to just the film and TV side of the things that we are going to have to cover and bring here to you guys and talk to all you guys about. It's going to be insane. There, it makes me wonder too. Like we definitely know that Marvel and Disney in, in general, everything they own, they're definitely focusing a lot more. Again, the majority of everything we're talking about is going to be Disney plus straight to consumer. So I'm very curious to see because yep. uh, DC fandom, a lot of their big announcements were theatrical releases like films. So I'm curious to see if they're going to shift. We already know they're shifting as far as doing like same day HBO Max and theater releases. So I'm wondering how that's going to go with like Black Ad. Obviously, these movies are far out. So the world, hopefully the world is oh, yeah. back to normal by then. But uh, uh, right. Fingers but, uh, crossed. you know, just as of now, thinking for now, the way everything is, I'm wondering if they're going to try to change gears up for uh, some of the stuff. Because we know the Batman, I think it's moved to 2022 now. Uh, so hopefully that's far enough for to be back to normal. Yeah. But uh, I'm very curious just to see what their thinking is with all their stuff. And are they just going to be doing a lot more TV show stuff? Because we know we're getting a Gotham series that's in the same universe as uh, Pattinson, uh, the Batman. Right. Uh, we've heard rumbles of a Ben Affleck uh, Batman series for HBO Max. So I'm wondering yep. when this, when they're going to start doing all this stuff too. Like not just doing like the Titans and stuff like that. Like doing full-on theatrical quality shows for HBO Max. I feel like it's coming yep. soon. It's coming. I think it has to, right? I mean, especially right? they're they're already way behind the eight ball when it comes to competing mm -hmm. with Disney. So with Disney getting ready, especially after yesterday, I mean, like I said, they threw down the gauntlet, <laughs> man. When it came to their competitors, I mean, they, they again, like I said right at the beginning of the show, the, they basically said, in case you all forgot, let us let us remind you. You know what I mean? So the, I think Warner Brothers, they, they've got a belly up to the bar at this point. So we'll see. I think, I think we're going to be – we're in for quite a ride for the next couple of years when it comes to uh, geek, geek content. Definitely, definitely there's going to be no shortage uh, of uh, content. And if, like, the rumors are true where, like, you know, the comics are, are minimized and we're not getting as many uh, actual physical – comics coming out they're definitely supplementing it with tv shows and movies <laughs> <laughs> you think <laughs> so <laughs> it's a whole new world <laughs> it, it is a brave new world out there but with that i'm not gonna get into the weeds but i will say really really briefly that dc just released uh, a lot of their comic slate for 2021 and it seems like they still got quite a few comics coming out after uh future state so they announced a bunch of creative teams and stuff potentially so yeah we'll be talking about that in future episodes as that rolls out and future state ends but with all that said, Tim, I think we're done here. I think we're done. Bro, we, <laughs> we, we, we want to thank all of you. If you're, first, for those of you who are still with us. <laughs> we we talked, man, and this was, this was for on our part. <laughs> this was yeah, a heavy this lift. This was a heavy lift, and it was a lot to try to not lot. ramble, and I think we did ramble. <laughs> we rambled a little bit, but, man, there's just so yeah. much to cover. 
Yeah. There's, and we didn't even really, there's, there's a lot we didn't even talk about. And, you know, we'll, we, as this all, all of these things roll out over the next year, especially over the next few months, we're going to be talking extensively about all these things as we learn more, especially once they kick off the WandaVision series here in early January or mid January. And then, you know, on and on it goes from there. So uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a fun first couple quarters of 2021. Yes, indeed it is. But uh, with that said, we'll see you guys next time when we talk about all things comics. Thank <laughs> you.